once said, we all make choices in life, but in the end, it's the choices that make us. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, as I stand here in front of you today, I want to walk you through the different phases of my life. I have divided my life into three main chapters. Chapter 1, Amicable Innocence. It was a windy April night and as the clock struck 12.50 am, the nurse came out and said, Oh, it's a boy, congratulations. And the whole world burst into joy and ecstasy. Especially my grandmother who in all her excitement forgot that she was celebrating so hard that she was in the middle of the hospital waking the whole hospital up in the middle of the night. As a kid, like every other child, I wanted to run behind my own shadow, catch the bubbles before they burst. But my excitement and this phase was short-lived as after four years, I was introduced to this new creature who happens to be my brother by the way and he was the center of attention. Until now, I was the apple of eye for my parents and here I was. I was in the corner, be it relatives or parents, everyone wanted to spend time with my brother, the kid. Everyone wanted to see him, be with him. And they, they, then this really didn't go wrong with me. So I thought to myself, I have to do something that will change this. So I used to intentionally get hurt sometimes, fall down so that I could be the center of attention. Although this brought me the center of attention, it also inflicted pain upon me. So then I decided that I should let this go. And like every other elder sibling here might agree with me that we don't have to crave for the attention. Our parents will treat us equally. So we have to let go the need for the attention. We don't have to crave for it. Chapter 2, Me in the Making. Along the journey of my life, I have made many friends. But three of them are the closest to me. We call ourselves the Fantastic Four. Each one of us is different in each which way from one another. But as a team, we are great. We just don't spend time together. I feel that when we are together, we make a memory. And the best thing about my friends is they accept me the way I am. They don't judge me with all my flaws. And that I feel is something to learn from. From all our friends, we should take that the acceptance, we learn the acceptance part, they accept us the way we are and also the feeling of oneness that we have. Having said that, the biggest inspiration of my life has been Shah Rukh Khan. Uh, maybe for some of you it might sound silly that how can an actor be an inspiration to one. But his journey of becoming the second richest actor in the world from being a middle class person is an inspiring journey in itself. Also, in today's day and age of flings and relationships where everyone is having broken or broken marriages, there he is. He married, he loved the Hindu girl, married her and has now three beautiful kids and is living happily. In fact, half of my vocabulary I derive from him. I follow his tweets, I follow his interviews and my family, my friends and my inspiration has made me what I am today. Moving on to chapter 3, the wake up call. During my engineering days, something beautiful happened to me. I met my senorita, obviously inspired from DDLJ. And as we grew old with our relationships, I tend to realize that it was not all about me. It was about us valuing the other person's opinion. I learned it from her. But sometimes, you know, as in every relationship, you just don't understand the woman. It's, it's very odd. Uh, for instance, there was a stupid fight that we had for a silly reason. And uh, she said, don't talk to me. Uh, I realized my mistake and I said, I'm sorry. I will not talk to you or I have called her. So I realized my mistake. I said, I'm sorry. And he said, I said not to talk. I said not to talk to me. Why are you talking to me? So this time I knew what to do. So next time when she said don't talk to me, I really did. I put my phone aside and I was playing the game. One hour later I see 20 missed calls and 15 messages. All of which said, I, if I ask you not to talk to me, will you never talk to me again? <laughs> so sometimes I feel just women are wired differently. As I was going through this phase, there came the biggest setback of my life. My grandfather's demise. Uh, it was 9th of August 2012, he complained about a chest pain and my mom and dad were taking him to the hospital. He turned back to me and said, Gunal, would you like to come along? I hesitantly said no because I was tired after the day of college and I wanted to get to bed. 
but that has been the biggest regret in my life because that was the last day that I saw him. That decision of mine changed me totally. Although the transformation did happen overnight, it took me long enough and I am now a more sensible person. I learned to value people more in terms of how I treat them, in terms of how I talk to them. So that was in a way the wake up call for me. So my journey from being a senseless carefree child to being a more sensible person is indeed a journey of self-discovery. As I stand here in front of you today, I want to start a new chapter in my life. I want to wind up by saying, we don't have to be great to start, but we need to start to become great. Have you started yet? Thank you.